Today we're talking about, can you really do this business part-time? I'm sure that if you're tuning in and listening to this or watching it on YouTube, then you may have heard or been told or been persuaded or encouraged to take a look at a business like this. And somebody probably said that you can do this business part-time. Can you really do this business part-time? And I'm sure that as you've started working it, or even as you've talked with friends and family, you may have begun to question that, whether you're able to achieve what you want to achieve doing the business part-time or not. So we wanna give you some things to think about. And the first thing that, this, that, that I really wanna set the tone of this conversation with is you absolutely can do this business part-time. There are millions of examples of that. You can do this business part-time. What you cannot do and achieve your goals is do the business some of the time some of the time, kind of like when we say, I'm going to do that someday, or I'm going to do this someday, that wishing for someday never happens. So you have to have a strategy and a plan. And we're going to give you some elements that will help you create that so that you can do this business part time. Yeah. And I mean, just as we start out with this topic, I love the fact that you can do this business alongside of what you're already doing. I mean, if you think about how many people now are searching for additional income streams and not don't want to have all of their eggs in one basket, don't want to feel so vulnerable. Um, so I think it's so important to really get give people an accurate picture of what it looks like to do this business, because I think so many people don't have an accurate picture. I think a lot of people still think of this as, you know, the sort of direct sales, uh, part-time job kind of situation. And it's no longer that. I mean, it has become really a virtual online business that you can do from anywhere that you and I continue to uh, exemplify as we record these podcasts for, on the road from different places. <laughs> So I just think it's so important. I, I really am passionate about helping people gain clarity about what it really looks like to do this business. And as you just said, yes, you can do it part-time, but you can't do it some of the time. You can't do it just when you feel like doing it. You have to really commit it to it. You have to act like you have purchased a, a very expensive franchise and treat it like that but you do have the ability to plug it in to the parts of your day where you have time. And I used to love talking about this uh, business as being a commute time business. The challenge right now is that a lot of people aren't commuting anymore. Um, so many people are working from you know, uh, home and homeschooling and, and that kind of thing. But even that scenario brings up another reason why this business is so great. Because if you are homeschooling and you've got kids in different rooms on different Zoom calls, you can fit this business in between all of those other things that you're doing. So it's really a business that is about um, taking it seriously and remember remembering that the fortune is in the follow-up. So it's about doing what you need to do at the right time. So if, if, if somebody's waiting for you to get back to them about something, you don't wanna just put that off for a month when you decide, you think about it again. It, it only takes a couple of minutes to get back to somebody and, and give them what they need. So it's really about um, being, I think, committed versus compliant. And I think um, a lot of times we come into this business with more of a compliant history um, as an employee, we kind of do, we go to work, we, we're sketched in these scheduled hours and there are certain things that we need to do. And we, as long as we check off those boxes, we're being compliant. This business is about being committed and it's about really doing what needs to be done. Even if it's, you know, you're ready to go to bed and you didn't follow up with that one person that you told them you would get something to them. So it's really being a facilitator a lot of times of information, but it's about doing things in a timely manner and following up the way you say you're going to. Yes, that is really important. I mean, you are in business and credibility and trust and relationships is so important for it. And this goes for me, it goes back to belief. 
because we make the time for the things that we believe are important. I mean, we all have the same amount of hours in a day and the same number of days in a week and the same number of weeks in a year. And somehow some people do things and accomplish things and others don't. We make the time for things that we feel are important. So one of the things, if you're struggling with, I just cannot find the time to do this, I want to send you back to whoever is a mentor and a coach to you in your business. Find that person. If you don't know who that is, find that person in your lineage and your genealogy, um, uh, even cross line that might be able to support and help and encourage you to be accountable and to help you with your belief. Because if you really believe in where it is that you're going, and that's hard as not an employee. I mean, an employee doesn't require any belief. You just go in and you do the work and then you leave. Um, and But here as an entrepreneur, it all requires your belief. It requires your vision, your ability to see that I'm doing this right now and I may not be earning or achieving what I want to achieve, but I so firmly believe in the mission and the movement and the progress that I'm making that I'm going to be able to achieve it. And that makes you willing to do it. When you have your belief in the right order and that's strong, the rest of this kind of takes care of itself, such as your time planning, you know, making, being efficient and planning time and blocking your calendar. And when you're able, and I know we're going to talk more about this at another time about how couples work a business together. Um, and they even, even if one is just supporting the other or not. But when you are able to communicate what that belief and that vision is with whoever is helping you run your household, um, that makes a difference. Like I know for myself, time blocking is so important and consistency is more important than the results. Many times people marry the results, like they wanna get this rank or they wanna earn this amount of money and they're so attached to that result that they end up being inconsistent. And if you could just be consistent, then you're going to get those things. But consistency is what's super important. So for example, I remember as a mom in building a business like this, many times it was bed after bedtime. It was after bedtime that was my time to do some work. And it could be maybe 20 minutes or it could be maybe an hour that I just allotted myself that on these nights after bedtime, not seven nights a week, but you know, five nights a week, I am going to take this time and I'm gonna block it and I'm gonna fill it with income producing activities. Not the kind of things that I can passively listen to while I'm doing the laundry or the dishes or driving somewhere, but what are the things that are producing income, like follow-up that Janine talked about, or new connections and reaching out or sharing a video or having a conversation with someone and being curious and asking questions. Um, all of that stuff, when's the time frame that I can be doing that? And consistently doing that, not just one time a week, but try to give it at least five days a week that you're finding that amount of that window of time. And it could be as little as 20 minutes, it, you know, or, or, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. Um, but being able to be organized too, you know, have your binder, have your calendar. Now, some people like to work digitally with their calendar and it's all on your phone. That's great. Some people have a written calendar, but treat it like a business and organize your time that you're going to block this amount of time and you're going to do those things at certain times. Like follow up. Another example is I would call it follow up Fridays. I would take a lot of things, not, not customer questions, but things that I, like I wanna follow up and check in with people. Those kinds of taking the initiative to follow up and see how someone's doing with your product and service. I put all of those on Fridays. And so Fridays were my follow-up Friday days and I worked in my block of hour time on following up. Um, Sunday nights, I did all my reach out contact for an hour. I connected all my reach outs for the week on Sunday nights. You know, Tuesday night, you might ask your, your significant other that, you know, Tuesday nights are leftover night because on Tuesday nights during the dinner time where I'm normally making dinner, I'm going to be creating content, content for my social media post or whatever. Um, when you treat it like a business 
And when you have a vision for where you're going, you will find the time and you will make the time to be consistent and get the results. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Consistency is truly the name of the game. And what some of the things you were talking about were, were reminding me again of the committed version versus compliant, I think I've always loved the analogy of a garden. You know, it's like if you blocked out time that you were going to water your garden every Sunday, well, that might not work, especially if you lived in Arizona where it gets really, really hot and you went to all the work of getting the, the dirt ready and preparing the soil and getting the best seeds and putting them in the ground. If you just said, well, I'm going to water that garden every Sunday and but but on Tuesday, all the little plants were wilted and ready to die. And you didn't, all you needed to do was go give them some water that day to save them before they died. So it's really about paying attention to what you need to do. There's so many things that you can block and that, that you can, you know, really be organized and say, I'm going to do these things on this day. But you also want to be flexible enough to know that you are committed to the outcome. You are committed to succeeding. And so succeeding may mean that, uh, you know, you have to do something at an unexpected time because something comes out of nowhere that needs your attention right then. I think it's, it's so much about, and I love that about this business, but I think for some people, it's maybe harder than others. Um, maybe who are not as used to, uh, responding to things. And, you know, again, I think when you're switching from that traditional nine to five mode of going to work and getting everything done in this, these certain hours, it's a completely different thing when you're an entrepreneur and a business owner. Um, so, it, and it's also about um, being sensitive to the, the way that the people that you're communicating communicate. Um, I know that there's some people that are like email people or some people that are text people or messenger. Messenger is a big thing that gets me messed up because I don't readily check messenger, but I will check text. But some people are the opposite. So it's really a matter of also um, making sure that you're finding out what each person that you're working with needs so that you can um, be communicating with them the way that they are going to receive it and that they're going to uh, notice it. Yes, yes, for sure. And I love the analogy of a garden and that consistency uh, goes back to, you know, showing up a little, a little bit done every day makes a bigger impact than doing a lot on some day. Like someday I'm going to get around to doing that one thing, you know, just like you described and kind of like I've heard you share before a gym analogy, yeah. you know, um, you know, people that join a gym and then only show up once a month are not likely to get the same results as someone that just comes in consistently and may not put in a whole day's worth of effort, but they're consistent. And uh, that's, that's the same thing with this, you know, really in closing, if you think about it, when you have a hobby, you know, whatever your hobby is, it could be fishing, it could be uh, roller skating, it could be uh, flying, whatever your hobby is, hobbies cost you money. So when you treat this business like a hobby, it's going to cost you the way that a hobby does. Hobbies are fun. Hobbies you fit in when you can fit them in and you enjoy them and you like, you like doing them, but they cost you money. They don't make you money. When you treat this as a business and you do the kind of things that you would have done if you had made an enormous investment in starting a business, then it'll pay you the way a business will pay you and it will reward you over time. We're not about get rich quick schemes here. Um, it will reward you over time when you treat it as a business. So make the time for it. You find the way to make the time for things that are important to you. Janine, anything else you want to add? Nope. Just close the same way we opened. You can do this business part-time, but you can't do this business some of the time. All right. Thank you.